Welcome to the Code with Jason meetup. Tonight's Saturn CI, as usual. Um, I shall share my screen. Okay, here we are. And I have kind of a loose end hanging from last time. Um, so we can use this as a reminder of what to work out, what to work on. Um, so here's here's what I've been up to lately. And Rick, I think you're familiar with some of this. And Eric, maybe you haven't seen some of this stuff yet. But I have a billing section. And it currently doesn't work. Um, but let me see if I can real quick remedy that. I'll stash this and go to the main branch. Yeah, so here's the billing area. Um, and it's just a list of all the jobs I've run and the charges for each job and the total for all the jobs. And it's done by month. So you, so this is for August. These happen to be all from August 4th. But I've made some changes. I'll, I'll show you what changes are that I've made. Okay, so pull requests. I'll make a new pull request so we can see the changes easily. Charge model, that's the one. Okay. So I have created this new model called charge. Um, I'll explain what this is all about and my thinking behind it and stuff. So how do I keep track of charges? On the main branch here, all I'm doing is taking the calculated duration of the job and multiplying it by a certain charge rate to get this rate. But there's some problems with that. One being that if the rate ever changes, it'll retroactively change history. And that is no good. That like doesn't make sense. It's not the way to go. Um, so I wanted to capture that. I wanted to persist the charge at that point in time, snapshot it at that point in time so it would never change. And I could have done this by putting a couple columns on the jobs table, but I think a um, database schema just like just like the files in our Rails application, it should be self-evident what everything is for and what it does and stuff. And I think just like a Ruby file should have cohesion and a database table should have cohesion also. And so I don't want a bunch of miscellaneous columns on a table. And so I decided to have this new table called charges and it has a job ID a rate at that point in time, and then the duration of the job that it relates to. So that's what that's all about. But when I made those changes, I broke something. Mm, I don't know if I'm, oh, here it is. No, job fit, no, that's not it. Okay, billing controller, that's the one. So there is this assignment here, dates. Dates is what connects to this. These are those dates. Um, this dates assignment doesn't work anymore because the database schema has changed. So I wanna fix that. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, so you can see my comment here. It says replace this with a view component. And here's why. And I'll explain what a view component is in case anybody's not familiar. But previously, I had this kind of large query right in the controller. And it makes it a little bit hard to test. And it just 
it adds to the size of the controller. It'd be nice if there were somewhere good to put this. I don't feel like a model is quite the appropriate place to put it because it's very much view related logic. It's related to this. And to me, the use case where a view component shines is when you have view related logic that's too complex to just put straight in the view, but also doesn't really have a good home in a model. A view component is a good place to put complex view related logic when you don't have anything else to do with it. So that's what I want to do. Um, so first I'm going to restash this change and then I want to install the view component library. But I don't think I want to do this on this branch and add to the scope of the branch. I think I want to install a view component on main and then come back. Whenever I can find an opportunity to take a change as part of a larger change and just do that standalone off of main instead, I prefer to do that just to keep my changes as small as they can possibly be and mitigate risk as much as possible. So I think the first thing I want to do is add view component to my gem file. Oh, and by the way, I see this. I'm no longer using a Ruby LSP. I'll take that opportunity to remove some gems from my gem file. I'll do that as a separate commit, of course. The Ruby LSP stuff I tried out sadly did not live up to my expectations, so I'm not going to use that anymore. Okay. Oh, by the way, I have some weird stuff going on in my gem file. Development test. I have two development test groups. That doesn't really make sense, so I will unify those. Okay. Okay. Now I can add what I want to add. And this should be double quotes. Okay. I actually don't know how to do this. How do I install view component on rails okay view component and believe it or not i'll create a separate branch for this Okay, so I've added my view component gem. Oh, and then I guess I can go straight to rendering a uh, component or generating a component. Okay, well, I now regret creating a whole separate branch. Um, view component. Okay, so now I guess I'll just go back to the branch I was on, the charge model branch. Rebase main into it. Okay, now I'll do rails generate components. I'll call it billing navigation, I guess. Okay. And then it looks like in the um, view, I can just do this. So let's go to the billing controller. 
Okay, so here I'll instead say billing navigation component equals billing navigation component dot new. And I'll get rid of this for a second. So let's see what we get here. Okay. Uninitialized constant, not terribly surprising. Billing navigation component. Okay, so it does exist, but I think I might have to restart my rail server. Let's see if that did anything for us. Okay, we get something different. Dates that each undefined method. That's not surprising. Because it is in fact undefined. So here instead we'll do we'll just do print on this billing navigation component. Okay. And then we get nothing, which is because we don't have anything in our component yet. So we can move this dates assignment into the component. Okay, but we don't have any such thing as project.jobs. So let's pass it the jobs. Uh, yeah, project.jobs. Okay. Oh, and this stuff is also only used in the component, I think. Oh, wait. Okay, we have this year and month. Okay, let's do this. Jobs, year and month, year, grams, year and month, grams, month. Okay. We could say def initialize jobs year month. Okay, and jobs equals jobs. Okay, and what the heck is month string? Oh, okay, I see. All right, now let's see what happens when we refresh the page. Okay, undefined local variable or method year. Or billing controller. Oh, I see. Very interesting. Yeah, we need to get this perhaps from the billing navigation component, I suppose. Okay, syntax error, maybe it was from that. Billing controller line 13. Oh, it's from that. Okay, undefined method year for billing navigation component 
Yeah, not too surprising because we haven't defined such a thing. So we'll do Okay. And we still have no meaningful output, but that's okay. Now here it's saying dates. I think we want to call the method dates instead. Oh, and we do need that project ID. Okay, so instead of passing it project, sorry, instead of passing it jobs, we'll pass it project. Okay, let's see how that goes. Okay, still no meaningful output. I'm probably rendering it wrong. And the manner in which I'm rendering it wrong is that I'm not, I'm not rendering it at all. So let's see what that does. Okay. Private method select called for nil class. Yeah, it's not jobs anymore. It's project.jobs. Okay. And that seems to work. No, oh, there's no valid jobs before August. Um, that seems to work, but we still don't have any tests. So we will add that. But first, no reason not to commit this. Whoops. Okay, no surprises there. We'll fill this test in with something meaningful in a second. Okay, billing navigation component. And all those previous ones passed. Okay, so I want to add some tests for these dates. So I think I want to say for a month when there were jobs and for a month when there were no jobs. For a month when there were jobs, it should include an item. When there were new no jobs, it does not include an item. Okay. I'm just going to do this as a test out of laziness. I know it's not going to pass, of course, but this gets me started with something. Okay, undefined local variable or method dates. Oh yeah. Okay, billing navigation component equals billing navigation component dot new. Project, I'm gonna have to give it some project. And I can make year and month nil by default. For the moment, I'll just say create project. Uh, 
undefined local variable or method dates. I forgot to change this. Okay, now I expected blah, 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 and I got nothing. I got nothing because there's no job in whatever date it's using. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say created at was January 1st, 2020. And then I'll say the project is job.project. The year is 2020 and the month is one. Now let's see if we get anything different. Undefined method project for job. Oh yeah, we need job to build that project. Okay. We're expecting blah, blah, blah. Instead we got 2020-01. So now we can change our expectation to match. Okay, I didn't do it right. There we go. Okay, now we can do the case where we're targeting a month that doesn't include any jobs. Copy this to start with. So we can actually pull this job up. Use the same one, January 1st, 2020. So here we'll target February, 2020. And we will expect it to be an empty array. I'm surprised by this. Oh, yeah, it is going to include January because there was a job for that. What does the month change? Is passing the month actually do anything? I don't think it does. I think I made a mistake. Hmm. Yeah, I think I made a mistake. Doesn't make sense to pass this stuff in. I think we want this. Okay, and I'll put this up here just to show that it doesn't depend on the component. And this stuff does not come into the picture. This was an ill-conceived test.
Okay, so in a month when there were jobs, it includes the month for the job. Yes. Or maybe I should say this. It includes a date for any month that contained. No, I'll do this instead. There was a job in January 2020. includes a date for January 2020. I'm going to move this to Oh yeah, that doesn't make sense to have. Okay, so when there was a job in January 2020, it includes a date for January 2020. Great. Unknown keywords year and month. Oh. Okay, where's that coming from? I don't know where that's coming from. Line four of billing navigation component. Yeah, but they're not there. Oh. There. Okay. So I still don't have all the tests I want, but I am going to commit that. Okay. Hmm. We're doing map. Oh, yeah, and we're splitting it. Actually, I think this does give me everything I need. I don't really feel a burning desire to write a test for this. All right, so now I'm going to review what's in my pull request. And if I decide I'm happy with it, then I'll merge it. Yeah, I think I'm good with that. But in the interest of good habits, I think I'll maybe wait for this test suite to pass first before I merge it. And while we're waiting for that, let's think of what we might want to do next. This menu is obviously very ugly. Oh, and it doesn't even work right. Yeah, it should only contain jobs that have charges. So if there's a job in January 2020 without a charge, it does not include a date. 
and this test will fail. Okay, so let's change this query so it behaves properly. I think maybe we can just join it to charges. Oops, I didn't have to do that. Can't join job, maybe it's charge. Okay, so this test here now passes. I have to create a charge for this one. Calling finish will create a charge. Yeah, now if I refresh this, there, now we only see months that contain a valid charge. Oh, it failed. I think this is a flaky test of mine. All right, well, I'm gonna assume this will pass and then I'll merge it. Um, and then what do we wanna do next? I think I wanna fix this flaky test. And in order to do that, I think I wanna add some conveniences. Like I wanna be able to see when this test last failed. Um, and I wanna maybe just to be able to see all failures, which right now I have no easy way to do. So it would be nice if in this filter here, where currently you can filter by branch, it'd be nice if I can filter by pass fail. So let's add that next. While we're waiting for this test, let's see where this code here is. builds list. Okay, so here is this um, filter. First question is why is it not sticky? You scroll down and the filter goes away. Doesn't seem right. It should be sticky the way this stuff is. So let's look into that. Let's see, what's the CSS for something that's sticky? Position fixed? Maybe that's not how I'm doing those. Hmm. Maybe I'm making the wrong part scrollable. Build list, am I making build list scrollable? Build 
details. Hmm. I don't understand how this is working. Okay, build list overflow Y auto. What if I, okay, if I uncheck that, it's no longer scrollable. Okay. That's in here. Interesting. That's a little surprising. Let's move this into build list. Oh, but first, before we start actually messing with stuff, have these tests passed? They have. All right, so I'm going to go to main. Merge this charge model thing. Okay, so now build list. Whoops. Build list CSS. Oh, it's duplicated. All right, we'll do it like that. See if it still looks right. Okay. I will commit this now. Fix build list CSS. Okay, build list, application CSS. So I want to wrap not build list, but just this URL, which confusingly has a controller called build list, even though this says build list. So maybe we ought to address that. Okay, so we have build list CSS. We have build list HTML, but build list HTML seems not to have this top level build list div. Where is it? It's in builds list. No, it's not. This is what I was just looking at. Okay, my bad. Okay, it's in jobs show. All right. Well, what if instead of doing it like this, we do it like this? Okay, seems more logical to have this build list element in the builds list template. Let's see if everything still works after that. Looks like it does. Okay, I think I'll say here, make element organization more logical. Okay, here, I'm still not comfortable with the fact this is called li build list, and then this is using the build list controller. I think one of these two things is the real build list and the other is not. 
And I think I'd say that this is the real build list and this is not. Maybe call it the build list wrapper, but Okay, we have something called build wrapper. I don't know where it is. Okay, that's called build wrapper. Interesting, and it contains builds list and jobs show. So that's like this whole thing. I don't know if I feel like it's appropriate to call that build wrapper. That div is just like everything. I think maybe I want to call it dashboard. Okay. Okay, rename build wrapper to dashboard. Where was I? Okay. Now I don't think I want to call this build list. I don't love the name build list container, but I think I'm going to call it that. And that makes things not work, unsurprisingly. There's a number of things prefixed with build list. Okay, so I think I'm going to say this. Okay, build list UL. I'm going to call this build list. Just curious. Let's see what that changes, if anything. Changes some stuff. Okay, so I'll change this to build list container. Okay. And then I'll change this to ul.build list. And li dot build list. No. Ul dot build list li. Okay. I think that's now looking the same as before. Um, but I want to change this overflow, I think, from here to here. Mm. So that's not working. I think I need build list to be a div that wraps this. So I'm actually going to undo all of this. And I'm going to say div class equals build list. See what that does for us. Okay, still can't scroll. Um, maybe I need to, hmm, I don't know what I need to do. Okay. Hmm, so I don't have, I can see the left top and right borders, but I don't see the bottom border, which tells me that build list might be just as tall as it needs to be. And that's why it can't scroll. I suspect that maybe, no, I don't know what to suspect. Hmm. 
okay, what if we do this? What if we change this to build list container? Now it's scrollable again for unknown reasons to me. Hmm. What if we take away this form? Still works. And what if we take away this conditional? Still works. What if we take away this build list class? Scrolling still works. Okay. Okay. I don't think I achieved what I wanted to there. Let's see. Okay. So build list, see this red border at the bottom. We can see that now for some reason when we When we do this, that border goes away because apparently this element is really tall now. Let's see. I don't know if build list container is doing anything anymore. Well, I guess it was doing something, but does it need to be called build list container? Um, apparently not. So what if we do this? Make a new build list container that wraps this and then say build list container. Nope, that doesn't work. All right, I am trying to do too much at once. So I'm gonna actually blow away everything I've done because I've lost track of where I even am. All right, so that's back to working how it was. Okay, let me get real clear about what I'm trying to do. Okay, so what I wanna do is I want this to be scrollable, but um, I don't want this to scroll. So I actually want like this area to be scrollable, which does not include this um, filter element. And am I referring to build list anywhere else? Not in the CSS, it looks like. But in what context does build list exist? That might have something to do with it. Okay, I'm going to call this build list container. Okay, the scrolling still works. Messed up some of this stuff, that's fine. I'll call this build list. I expect that to fix some of the CSS. I can still scroll. Okay, how about this? 
Let's keep that much because that still works fine. Separate build list into build list and build list container. Okay. Now I'm going to try a few things. Build list. Yeah, just build list. Let's just move the borders. Let's see what happens if we just do that. Hmm, something happened. I can't tell exactly what. Oh yeah, the filter just got a little weird. Okay. Yeah, so that's not, I do want the border on the container like that. What if I move the width, what happens just out of curiosity? Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. If I move the width, the width does change. Okay, interesting. So I'll keep that there. And if I move this stuff to here, I'm guessing the scrolling will stop working again. And it does indeed. Interesting. Yep. Okay, so I need this to have like a maximum height of the parent of the parent element. Max height, 100%. Seems too easy. Huh. That seems to work. And now we see that the form sticks. Okay. I'm fine with that, I guess. I mean, I'm not just fine with that. That is exactly what I wanted. Okay. Well, let's commit that. Okay, now we can maybe add a filter for passed or failed. Um, so let's do that. Add checkboxes or passed and failed. <laughs> okay, that looks like garbage, but that's okay. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to at least make that look slightly better. Okay, I'll put each one of these in its own div. Okay. Um, and now I'll write some tests and we'll probably wrap up soon. I'll get the tests like just barely started. Then we can pick up with that next time. Okay, so where do I want to put this test? Well, could go in builds. I must have some kind of filter test already. Um, oh, spec filter spec. Okay. Well, to me, it feels like this is in the wrong place. That should be in the builds folder somewhere. Let's see, we'll put this in the build list um, folder, I think. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at what I already have. Okay, so this is what I already have. It's kind of a big test already. Um, but we have main branch only shows builds from the main branch. Um, Includes all branches as an option, even after selection. Oh yeah, we're talking about the branch, branch filtering. Okay, so how about this? Let's make a new folder. Spec builds, build list. Um, build. Filter, I guess that's what I'll call that thing is the build filter. System. Okay, and then we'll move this to spec builds, build list, build filter, build filter system. Uh, and I'll call it branch spec because we're filtering by branch. Okay, then I'll open that one up. Describe branch filtering. Now commit that. Okay, so now I want to add a second test. So we have the branch filtering, and then we can call the status filtering. Okay, and now I can 
bring back my check boxes. We can say something like context, um, past builds only. It, and let's do this. We'll do create a past build and create a failed build. Past builds only, it includes the past build. And it does not include the failed build. And here we can have the opposite. Failed builds only. It includes the failed build and does not include the past build. And we can say past and failed builds. It includes the failed build and it includes the past build. Okay, so that should be a decent um, starting point for us next time. That'll be pretty clear what I was starting to do. So I'll pick that back up in the next session. Let's review what we did today. Um, we created that view component. And as a reminder, um, the way I use view components is when there is a piece of view related logic that I don't feel like has a good home anywhere else in the app, I'll put that in a view component. And by the way, I wrote a, um, wrote a blog post about this. Yeah. So it's called the problem that view component solves for me. Oh, apparently there was one of these videos about it too. Um, yeah. And I just, I described the, the problem that it solves for me, basically what I just said, but there's more detail here. So we did that and then we made this sticky in such a way that allows the filter to, sorry, we, we made the, filter form sticky. And now we're in the process of adding these past and failed filters here. Okay. Well, that's it for today. Thanks guys for joining me and I will see you next time.